The aim of this presentation is to justify why people who use drugs should be included in programmatic hepatitis C treatment decisions and how this can be achieved in an equitable manner within the current context of limited treatment availability. MSF has been present in the Manipur state of India uh, since 2004. Manipur shares a long border with Myanmar, which has proven to be fairly porous to the transit of opiates. This has resulted in a high number of intravenous drug users within the northeastern states of India. MSF currently operates two HIV ART centres under a public-private partnership with NACO. These are situated in Cherichandapur and Moray. We provide predominantly care for HIV in addition to treatment for drug resistant and drug sensitive TB. More recently, we have commenced treatment of hepatitis C in the context of HIV hepatitis C co-infection. Hepatitis C and the HIV epidemic in the northeastern states of Manipur or of India has been driven by the use of intravenous drugs. This has revolt, resulted in a very complex mix of interrelated competing comorbidities within our cohort. Hepatitis C. If we look at the prevalence of hepatitis C within India, I beg your pardon, um, HIV has been the mainstay of treatment. Since 2012, uh, MSS systematically started screening for hepatitis C and we found co-infection rates with uh, HIV and hepatitis C of approximately 30%. Within India, the estimated prevalence of H, uh, hepatitis C is 1 to 1.5 per cent. The estimated prevalence of HIV is 0.26 per cent. However, in Manipur, a high burden state of India, the HIV prevalence is estimated at 1.22 per cent. The morbidity which ties these two diseases together is substance use and, in particular, intravenous injecting drug use. A large study was conducted by Solomon et al. in 2015 across India. Uh, the HIV prevalence and the hepatitis C prevalence was determined in just under 2,500 people within three sites of Manipur. And as you can see by these prevalence figures here, the injecting drug using community has a very high burden of the HIV and hepatitis C uh, uh, disease burden, particularly when compared to the Indian prevalences listed above. In addition to this, uh, these morbidities is overlaid mental health illness. Psychiatric disease is significantly higher in people who inject drugs compared with the general population. In addition, recent evidence is suggesting that hepatitis C has a direct impact on the central nervous system, resulting in cognitive and psychiatric illness. Due to shared social determinants of health and immune deficiency caused by HIV and hepatitis C, this population remains vulnerable to, uh, to tuberculosis as well. Now, when it was recognised that comprehensive treatment of HIV in this context must include treatment of hepatitis C, the limited treatment availability instinctively led to the adoption of an exclusion mentality when determining who should be offered this treatment. That is, the exclusion of patients who are more likely to have poor outcomes, adverse events or more complicated treatment courses as a result of treating competing comorbidities. This complexity was made even uh, more complex as a result of the fact that up until the beginning of 2016, pegylated interferon with its inherent adverse effects and complexity of treatment administration uh, was the mainstay of hepatitis C treatment within the Indian context. Added to this, the there was a programmatic desire for a good performance resulting in the exclusion of patients with multiple comorbidities and initial prioritisation of patients with advanced liver disease. This provided another exclusion barrier for people who injected drugs, as people who are actively injecting drugs by and large have less advanced fibrosis than past users as a, relate, uh, as a result of the duration of hepatitis C infection. Concerns of reinfection, poor adherence and poor outcomes for hepatitis C in uh, treatment for people who inject drugs was also another factor which was considered. However, uh, more recent studies have pr proven these uh, factors to be uh, unfounded, with uh, injecting drug using groups being treated with hepatitis C having comparable results to non-infected, uh, non-drug using groups. Uh, additionally, the rates of reinfection of injecting drug users following treatment of hepatitis C is approximately 2%. A model of hepatitis C care based on ethical and biological uh, an imperative necessitates a paradigm shift in the mentality from one of exclusion to one of inclusion. 
such as vulnerable groups, including people who inject drugs, can be equitably considered for inclusion in hepatitis C treatment initiatives. This requires an holistic, patient-centred approach, focusing on individual priorities and not specific diseases. Ethical considerations of autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, justice and respect for per pa persons has been largely ignored in these considerations, but these are required, such that uh, therapy is considered for all groups who could be effectively and safely treated, including the marginalised groups with high prevalence. This will provide an important opportunity for modification of, up, uh, of behavioural modification and uptake of harm reduction services. In addition, it's well noted that the highest burden of incident cases of hepatitis C is amongst the people who you know, are injecting drugs. As such, there is a very strong public health argument for the inclusion of people who inject drugs into hepatitis C treatment considerations. Um, that leads, of course, to the idea of treatment as prevention, where modelling studies has revealed that treatment of a rather modest number of people injecting drugs uh, for hepatitis C will result in a significant decreased prevalence over the next 15 years of hepatitis C. Uh, this is a diagrammatic representation of the model of, model of care employed uh, by MSF in the Manipur, which we feel results in equitable access to the currently limited availability of hepatitis C treatment for all patients infected with hepatitis C within our cohort. There is basically three parts of this model. Initially, there's cohort entry, which is through voluntary HIV testing and sputum screening, in addition to referral in from harm reduction and other services. This is followed by a process of integration and individualised patient prioritisation, that is the prioritisation of treatment needs. After this has occurred, the individual patient receives a specific individualised care depending on the treatment priori priority which is identified. This represents the five pillars of our care in the Manipur project. If we look more closely at the, um, the process of assessment and prioritisation, this consists of two components, a comprehensive medical assessment looking at HIV status and the adequacy of the HIV treatment being given the HIV uh, hepatitis C staging and severity and also an opportunity to screen for and diagnose opportunistic infections. The comprehensive psychosocial assessment looks at demographics, social support, mental health screening, substance use screening in addition to motivational barriers and adherence factors associated uh, required for treatment. On the completion of these two comprehensive assessments, the medical team and the mental health team conduct a clinical case conference on a patient-by-patient -patient basis to identify the patient's most pressing medical priority. Once this is identified, the patient uh, enters one of our pillars of care to have the most pressing medical priority, uh, an intervention for that priority. Um, Following completion of that intervention, the process is repeated such that another clinical case is reviewed, uh, conducted. The medical uh, and uh, mental health team again reassess the patient and prioritise the remaining existing comorbidities and medical treatment needs. Of the first 92 case conferences conducted on our HIV hepatitis C co-infected population, 11 of these patients were deemed to have an intervention for HIV as the most pressing medical priority. This was as a result of either adherence problems or the possibility of failure to first-line treatment. Of these 92 patients, one patient was identified as having an opportunistic infection. Of the 92 patients, 54 patients were deemed to, be, to have hepatitis C as their most urgent medical treatment priority. That is to say that their HIV was well controlled and that there was either an absence of substance use disorder or psychiatric illness, or, if present, these were well controlled and stable. Following the individual interventions for these uh, medical priorities, a repeat case, uh, case conference was conducted. Of the 11 patients who received an intervention to stabilise their HIV treatment, three patients were deemed uh, suitable for consideration for hepatitis C treatment. The patient who had an opportunity for infection was treated and uh, also deemed suitable. Of the 15 patients who required stabilisation of their substance use disorder, following intervention including OST, nine of these patients were now deemed uh, suitable for inclusion of treatment consideration for hepatitis C. That is, their substance use disorder was stabilised to the point where treatment could be affected uh, safely and uh, effectively. 
Of the patients with of the eight patients with significant mental health disease, five of these patients, after uh, pharmacotherapeutics and counselling, had their mental health stabilised and were also uh, considered for inclusion into hepatitis C treatment. The average duration of um, Duration from the initial case review to prioritisation for hepatitis C treatment for all types of interventions was 7.5 months. If we look at those uh, patients that were initially requiring assistance with substance use disorder, the duration of the intervention and reprioritisation was slightly higher than the average at 7.8. For those with a mental health intervention, it was 5.9. And for patients with HIV adherence issues or treatment failure, the mean duration of uh, intervention required was eight months. In conclusion, we, we feel that through a multidisciplinary model to assess, prioritise and manage related comorbidities, the most vulnerable populations can be equitably included in treatment of hepatitis C. There is a requirement for program managements and treatment providers to understand, accept and adapt care models to issues of social function and stigmatisation specific to people who inject drugs that currently limit access to treatment, including the parallel provision of effective harm reduction services. And finally, there are sound ethical and scientific justifications for the creation of model of cares, model of care delivery specifically tailored for the needs of people who inject drugs. I'd like to acknowledge our uh, MSF advisors, Dr. McKeel and Dr. Chris, and the MSF team in Manipur who do a terrific job. I'd also like to thank Dr. Til, uh, Til Kinkle, whose contribution to initial discussions were uh, responsible for a reorientation from an exclusive to an inclusive mentality. And I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Julian Schieffer for his valuable contributions to the ethical considerations. Thank you. <laughs>